Having dealt with unilateral mistake, we now need to look at the other two kinds of mistake, common mistake. So common mistake occurs where both parties are actually mistaken about something very important to the contract, something of primary um, importance to the contract. And a case to help us think about that is Leafend International Galleries. So in Leafend International Galleries, we have a, a customer, Leaf, purchasing a painting from uh, International Galleries. So International Galleries have this uh, fabulous painting that they're going to sell to Leaf. And one of the things that happens is that they actually believe it's by a specific artist. So they actually think it's by an artist, a very famous artist, by the name of uh, John Constable. So what actually happens is after the sale, so we have dollars going this way and the picture goes this way, and then later um, Leaf finds out it's not a uh, constable. Now no, we're not talking about where International Galleries was doing something uh, dodgy. We're just finding out that uh, the painting isn't actually by the artist who Leaf didn't know it was um, that artist, and neither did International Galleries. The court held in Obita, and we know that Obita is persuasive while not binding, but it's likely that's how a future decision would be made. They held, you know, even if both parties thought um, that it was constable, this was not a voidable contract. It was not something that Leaf could get out of. I need to make that clear that this was not a voidable contract. And the reason of this was because the contract was a sale for this painting. And because it was a sale for this painting, not a painting by Constable, then there was no common mistake. It wasn't essential to the contract. So we must remember that with common mistake, um, we need to have a mistake about something that is central to the contract. And in the case of Leaf and International Galleries, uh, that wasn't the case according to the courts. So Leaf and International Gallery shows us that common mistake needs to be a very major mistake. The mistake of who the artist was held by both parties was, enough, was not enough for the contract to actually be set aside. What kind of mistakes necessary? Well, Pritchard and Merchants and Trademans Tradesmen's Mutual Life Assurance Society gives us uh, an example of the kind of case that we would need. So in this case, we have the uh, beneficiary of a life insurance policy. So it gets paid out uh, if someone dies. It's that kind of insurance um, policy. Now, what had happened was the payments had stopped and so the insurance uh, policy wasn't in place anymore. Then what happened is uh, the beneficiary started paying them again. So, so we start paying the dollars uh, again. And then we have the, uh, the insurance company here. So they take the dollars and they issue the policy. So again, we've got the promise, I'll pay you the premiums and we've got the premiums being paid here, and the policy, I will promise to pay you uh, if the uh, subject of the life insurance policy actually dies. And what was the problem? The problem was when they started paying these funds again, the person who was the subject of the insurance policy, so the person who was subject of the policy was dead. Okay, so this is a pretty important fact. And what the courts found was, look, this person who was paying the premiums again, uh, they didn't know, and the insurance company didn't know. So it was a common mistake. The court found that there was no contract. Because the entire subject matter of the contract wasn't there anymore. So you can see the courts are loath um, to allow a mistake, even a common mistake, 
to um, undermine a contract, then it has to be very major, such as to go to the heart of the entire contract.